Hello and welcome back. I'm Charles Showalter. You're listening to the Union Edge Labor's Talk Radio. Thank you very much for tuning in. We appreciate you hanging out with us for the afternoon, that's for sure. Joining us now, um, we've got Admiral Joe Sustak, uh, candidate for Pens- uh, senatorial office here in Pennsylvania. Um, Admiral, welcome back to the Union Edge. Good to be with you, Charles. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Admiral. We appreciate you being with us. Uh, Joe, I understand that you, you've laced up the hiking boots and you're back at it. What's going on? <laughs> well, you know, I did the 422-mile walk across Pennsylvania from the New Jersey to the Ohio uh, borders, uh, walking in the shoes of Pennsylvanians from small businesses to labor to women to seniors. Now I am still continuing that 422-mile-plus walk as I walk now the main streets of Pennsylvania. For tomorrow, I'll walk from wilkes all the way to Scranton, talking about issues that really do affect us. In fact, tomorrow we'll be talking about, as we kick it off, and then end at Scranton, uh, manufacturing, small businesses, infrastructure, those things that make that region work or not work. And we know that we've got challenges, but they're solvable. And so that's why I'm continuing to walk in the shoes of Pennsylvanians. And, Joe, what are you hearing from Pennsylvanians? What are they saying to you? Um, are they talking to you about the TPP? Are they talking to you? What are they? What are they saying? Well, first off, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I hear of how the system, the establishment, has let them down, and they're not going to take it. They want to change things. That's first and foremost. They're looking for someone to trust, to lead, be willing to lose their job over doing and taking care of their job. Second, they really are concerned every day about a quality job where wages begin to rise again. Americans know, despite not even having to read the facts, that since 1999 till today, working families are earning about an average about $1,200 less in Pennsylvania than they did back in 1999. Mm -hmm. They know that just from day to day, having now their partner also working, trying just to keep in place moving ahead. We want jobs that rise. And then we need uh, human capital, our most precious asset, to get the right training. We spend less of any developed nation on training our workforce so that they're ready to take the jobs of quality that compete with other nations. Well, there you go. And, and I mean, you know, nobody does it better, faster, and cheaper than the American workforce. Um, it, it's the ingenuity. It's the willingness to adapt and overcome. It's the willingness to get in there and, and get it done. And, and, and Joe, you know, one of the things that's frustrating to me is buy American. And we see the erosion of buy American all over the place, and I don't know why this is happening. I mean, you know, Joe, I got to tell you, this probably is going to bug you as much as it bugs me. I actually saw a military recruiter driving a Hyundai, and that was his G car. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, really, we can do better. Well, we can do better, but I got to tell you, Charles, manufacturing is on the cusp of coming back to America. It costs as much today to produce something in China as it does here at home when you include the cost of them shipping it back here because wages have been rising at double digits every year in China for the last seven years. This is our moment, and so now's the time to say exactly what you had brought up before. Let's use what we have more than any other nation, our ingenuity, our entrepreneurship, our innovation. Let's train our workforce, the artisans, the welders, those people like my father worked in Philadelphia Naval Shipyard, those people like my grandfather who's a union member at Lucan Steel, those people that made America great in manufacturing. This is our moment now. There you go. Joe, what do we have to do to get that done? What are the, what are the tools we need to use? Well, first off, what we need is to make sure people understand that in the next five to seven years, we're going to need about five million artisans, those who graduate from high school but go to a a community college, go to get a certificate, go to be those that made our nation great before in manufacturing. And that means we have to invest in that. And that's going to take a combination of private industry as well as our, our government. And here's what I mean. If you look at about 2006 until this past year or so, 
The investment by manufacturing has been flatlined, by private industry has been flatlined. In fact, other studies show if you look at the percentage that's going into training our workforce by manufacturing, it has actually declined as a percentage of what they have put in before by half. So that means we're not investing in our workforce. That's what it's going to take. Now, that doesn't mean government jumps in and does it. What it means is you have a partnership because we have places like uh, Wisconsin, other places that have actually human capital development bonds where people actually help to buy bonds that then invest in our workforce to become those artisans that we need in the future. Public-private venture, that's what we need to invest in human capital. There you go. There you go. And, and this is a wonderful thing. And Joe, I'm very glad that you're pushing this and you're talking about it. And, um, you know, we, we just got to keep doing this. One, a, one last question. Uh, women's health care in this country, I, I think we're getting off message. I think we're getting away from what we should be talking about. What do you think? Look, without a question, we have got to focus so much more than we have been doing on women's health care. I mean, we know that up until the Affordable Care Act got passed, women, when they went on to the individualized market, they just wanted to buy health care themselves. They would have to pay twice as much as a man because they can bear a child. Today, we stopped that under the Affordable Care Act. We actually put into the Affordable Care Act uh, uh, the ability for women to get free preventive screenings so that you can get prenatal care for pregnant women to make sure that the child will be fine. And if not, you can intervene early to take care of the health within the womb. Those are the types of things that we have got to bring more to the fore because we find that when you compare us to other developed nations, our child mortality rate is not at the top by any means. And that's why, Charles, you're spot on, is we've got to focus on this. and We've got to do it. And the Affordable Care Act, the Affordable Care Act actually makes that type of intervention with free preventive screenings, the ability to actually have women get screenings for all types of health care to make sure that early on as they're bearing a child, they can produce that type of future uh, American that is healthy and ready to go over years to be trained, educated, and be a great productive citizen. There you go. Admiral, any final words for us today? Yes. We are really just about the greatest uh, 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 portion, uh, moment we have had for some time because I believe as I look around the world with my national security experience and look at places like China where unfortunately we let companies outsource our manufacturing, that they are about to bring it home. And now is our moment to take advantage of the greatest asset we have, people, and that's why down in Washington, D.C., I still feel they don't get it. They've got to stand tall and say, look, remember labor. Labor is the last organized force we have standing for the working family. Remember, it is about the working families. And whatever has to be done to get that proper investment in training, in the community colleges, in college, in the workforce, let's do it. Because at the end of the day, like I saw in the Navy for 31 years, it was our sailors here in Pennsylvania. It's our working families. Let's invest in them to make sure we take advantage of this opportunity of manufacturing coming home. Admiral, how do we find your website? My website is josestac.com. That's josestac.com, and Sestac is S-E-S-T-A-K. And as you well know, there in Pittsburgh, there's a lot of Slovaks that very well uh, know the spelling of that name. <laughs> it's a pretty common name in Slovakia from where my father emigrated from. There you go. Admiral, hey, thank you very much. And, uh, Admiral, I just got to say this. Anybody else running for Senate from the state of Pennsylvania, if you want to come on this program, you're more than welcome. We appreciate it. Admiral, we'll talk to you again soon, okay? Great to be with you and a great Pennsylvania day, Charles. Take care. Always a pleasure, Admiral. Admiral Joe Sestak. Uh, Running for Senate. We appreciate uh, him coming on the program. In the meantime, I'm Charles Showalter. You're listening to the Union Edge Laborers Talk Radio.